It is time to stand up, and I couldn't think of a better person to have on the show than Billy Hallowell. Billy is a journalist, a commentator, um, an author, a TV host. Like, is there anything that you don't do? <laughs> There's probably a lot, yeah. <laughs> Well, one of the reasons why I wanted you to be on this show is because this is about meeting culture with a biblical worldview. And you have been in this space for years and years and years. You've worked for The Blaze TV. You're with CBN now. Like this has been the space that you have operated in for a long time. And so I was like, I can't think of a better person to uh, to break me into this podcast. So welcome. I'm excited. Thank you for thank you for having me. It's a fun space to be in. Yeah. It's a crazy space to be in and a tough one, but it is a fun and an important space to be in. Yeah, I think that we need to be able to communicate biblical truth with love. So we can't hammer people over the head with things, but we I think this show is going to be a show where we're going to make people aware of a lot of different things. Yeah. So um, one of the questions that I wanted to start off with is you've had such an incredible career. Um, tell us a little bit more about the, the work that you've done, because I, I want everybody to know you if they don't already know you. No, thank you. Yeah, it's, you know, it's funny how God opens doors that you think, I don't even know if I want that door open. Or you're like, what is this? Like, what is good? You know, I thought I was going to cover politics. I was, I grew up in a Christian home. You know, faith was really important to me. I had a really good head knowledge of it when I was younger, not necessarily a heart knowledge. Right. But I love the Lord. And I thought, I'm going to go into politics. I'm going to cover it. It's going to be great. And God just kept saying, no, you're going to go over here and do this. No, you're going to cover faith and culture. And yeah, there'll be some politics, but it's going to be driven by faith and culture. And I really resisted that for a long time. And, you know, I worked at The Blaze, and so I got to kind of do everything there. But I'll never forget coming into the stories of people's life change. Yeah. You know, people who went from a porn star to a pastor, from a, you know, these really radical conversion stories. Yeah. As I started to encounter those and get to tell them, it started changing my you know, head knowledge into real heart knowledge of faith. And that, for me, was transformational. And a lot of times for me, just coming into the coverage of these things, I've realized a lot of it is just what God's trying to show me and teach me. Yeah. And so selfishly, that's kind of how I've approached <laughs> a lot of these things. You know, oh, I'm really interested in that topic. I want to hear from that person. So, yeah, I mean, I just it's been amazing to storytell. And that's kind of become my passion. I don't care if it's a celebrity or... I actually like people. Everybody has a yeah, story. Everybody. everybody has a story. Are there any stories in particular that like really stand out that were kind of a, a life changing aha moment for you? Yeah, you know, there's a story that I think of all the time. It was one of the last stories I told at the Blaze before I left, and it was a girl who was going to a clinic, and she was going to have an abortion. Uh -huh. She found out she was pregnant, and you know, you hear a lot of negative things, you know, of course, in secular media about protesters outside of clinics. But when she got to the clinic, she went inside. And I'll never forget this. She heard people singing and praising and saw them praying outside the building for her. And something told her to get up and walk outside and talk to those protesters. Right? Wow. But, yeah. And they ended up convincing her to keep her baby. She ended up having twins. Oh, my goodness. To keep her baby. And not only did they do that, they held a shower for her. They helped her with those kids. They walked alongside her. And it was such a simple story, but it was such a powerful story of, gosh, if we just step outside of ourselves for That's other right. people and we don't bang them over the head That's and we right. love them yes. and we put our actions and our mouth together. Yeah, faith without works is dead is yeah. what James tells us. So. so those are the kinds of stories I love. Yeah. You know, I just love them. Yeah. So what about your influences? So who's mentored you in 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 this area and who are some of the the thinkers or some of the people that have really impacted your career? You know, that's such a that's such a good question. Lee Strobel, uh -huh. I would say for me has been somebody who, you know, it was kind of a dream of mine when I wrote a book to have him endorse it and it was something that God opened the door to, but just watching how he engages, right? And how he went from atheism into Christianity in an incredible way. Yeah. And he asked really good questions and he went on a journey and 
and in asking those questions found the truth. I think a lot of us don't ask good questions sometimes yeah. and we like to sort of hide out in the shadows, but he didn't do that. He went out and tried to disprove Christianity and I found love that. right and then found Christ, right? And found yes. Christ. And so I think, you know, he, just the way he writes, he's a journalist, he's trained. And for me that's a really important thing. I think we need to as believers and, and I'm guilty of not always doing this, be knowledgeable about what we're saying. We have a lot of opinions about things sometimes as human beings. Right. But as Christians, we're called to have the truth. So that might mean challenging ourselves on some things. It might mean really understanding them before we, and we're going to walk away with the same gospel opinion, but we, we know why we believe that. Right. So people like him have really inspired me to think deeper before I kind of go out and say something. You know, that's been something really important for me in raising my kids. It's not just believe what I believe, but know what you believe and know why you believe it, because ultimately you're going to stand before the Lord. You can't ride on my faith. And my oldest son, when he was in college at HBU, which is now HCU, Houston Baptist, now Houston Christian, but Lee Strobel was one of the professors there. And I was so giddy uh, that he got to spend time under his mentorship and really challenged them to share their faith, to share their faith. And he, my son, I was like, well, who are you gonna pick? And he said, I wanna interview, cause they had to go interview someone. And he said, I wanna interview this Jewish guy that he worked with. He said, because he wasn't a Messianic Jew. And I thought maybe he would go for like a total unbeliever, but he was like, I'm really interested in why, you know, why not Jesus? Jesus was Jewish, so. Right, right, yeah. 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 No, I, I love that. You know, and I think, you know, unnamed people who have kind of shaped me are the people who just, they leave everything behind and they become missionaries in Cambodia or they, I mean, those stories, because I, I think to myself, do I have that type of faith? You know, you want to say on paper you do, but would right. I, if God said, go and do this, sell all of your stuff, take your family, would I do it? And that's a real challenge to me. And so in a weird way, it's inspired my faith, though, just through covering those stories and how I want to aspire to be. I want to be that person. Right. Again, I don't know if I, you know, I want to be. <laughs> well, the word witness, actually, um, the word martyr in means witness. Mm -hmm. And so as I was writing The Struggle is Real, But So is God, I did an in-depth word search on that. And I was like, yes, I believe in Jesus, but if I'm going to be hung on a cross, do I really believe right. in Jesus? Right. Right. And and we don't have persecution like that in America right now, um, but people all over the world, like that's a decision that they have to make. Every and, day. Yeah. Life or death. Yeah. Losing your job, losing. I mean, I think persecution, I mean, it's a whole other topic, but, but looking right. at those stories of what people go through and what they're willing to still do to still follow Jesus knowing, I mean, there was just a story I covered about a couple that converted from Islam to Christianity in Uganda and they were slaughtered outside of their house, right? Mm -hmm. Two months after they became Christians and you, you know that risk and yet you've discovered the truth and you're willing to do anything to hold on to that truth and to spread it to other people. That's a challenge to us in the West because we do not, no. yes, there are issues. Yes, there are, and we could talk about that. There are things that are happening and maybe the roots are setting for something way worse later on, but we don't live in that. We live in freedom overall, being able to express ourselves in our faith. And so that's a real challenge to yeah. me as a person and as a, as a believer. Yeah. So um, I'm going to swing back a little bit. We, we talked about truth and love. So in your work, I mean, you've covered lots of controversial issues. How do you deliver? You're, you're an excellent interviewer, um, just big fan. But how do you how do you balance that truth and love? Because I think that's really important in reaching people. It's it's both. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's so important. And it takes time. I think we have to be prayerful about it. Right. You know, a lot of times it's easy to come at something, especially when we don't understand it, we haven't been exposed to it with a tone that is really unhelpful. Right. You know, to me, I have found the tone is everything because mm -hmm. if you have a loving tone, you can be saying something that is harsh, but loving, that it obviously is truthful, but loving. When you, when you have the wrong tone though, I mean, there are things I hear from other Christians that I agree with in principle. Yes, you're hundred percent right, but the way you're saying it, I actually find off-putting. So imagine being an unbeliever we should, I feel like everything we say and do, we need to frame it in a way that does not compromise the truth. Right. But that seasons it enough for people to hear it. And sometimes they don't want to hear it and they're going to lash out. And that, but Well, the gospel is offensive to those who are perishing. That's what scripture tells us. Yeah. So there will be some. But if we can deliver the truth in love, there will be others that will be able to receive it. 
Absolutely. And, and you have to make sure, I, at the end of the day, I want to make sure I said things and I don't always do this. So we, again, it's a challenge for us. I've said it in a way that was truthful and loving and that nobody can say anything negative about me. I've tried to do it the right way. But my concern right now is I think a lot of people in the church, a lot of us are trying to conceal the truth because we're really afraid of how people are going to feel about it. And we don't want to lose friends and loved ones. We don't want to offend people. But there is nothing loving about concealing the truth. That's right. And I think that is something that we have got to understand as Christians. And if we're walking around out there and we're concealing the truth because we're so concerned about love, then we are violating what we're called to do. And on the flip side, if you're being so, you know, truthful that you have and you have no love, that is also violating what we're called to do. Right. That is the whole reason this podcast was born because for a long time I never wanted to offend anyone. And so, uh, yes, I shared truth, but I was always very careful about what I said. And the Lord really showed me, no, it is time. We have to engage culture. We have to get our hands dirty. We got to be out there doing things. And as you were speaking, it reminded me of something I wanted to ask you about because we just had the Super Bowl recently and there was this big <laughs> controversy about uh, the He Gets Us campaign. And then I saw that you, you wrote an article about that. So I didn't get a chance to read the whole thing, but would love to know how you handled that because there was, I saw a lot of debate on yes. both sides. Yeah. And I think there are some issues where I am to remain quiet because I don't think that I need to say something about everything. Not everyone Which needs to smart. say something about Which is smart. That's discernment. About... <laughs> <laughs> but but where, did, where did you go with that? Yeah, you know, that was a real struggle. I didn't want to write it. I had to do my weekly column. I was like, I don't want to write about it, but I have to. I have to write about it. You know, and it's funny. My pastor preached on it and he had a different view than I did. I think everybody has a very different view on it. There's two things you have to weigh. The ad itself during the Super Bowl that he gets us at, right? Which right. is a collection of images of people washing other people's feet. The people's feet that were being washed, it was a woman outside of a clinic, somebody who appeared to be in the LGBTQ community and a lot of other people, an, an immigrant, a migrant, it looked like getting on a bus. Um, you have to balance the ad and then the follow-up. What is the purpose of the ad and what's gonna happen? And so a lot of people were outraged by the ad itself because at the end of those images, it says, you know, Jesus, he gets us, he's not about hate. And that upset people, I think, because the last image was the LGBTQ image and then the hate thing. And it's like, well, our Christians hateful, you know, but it's true. Jesus wasn't about hate, right? We shouldn't right. be about hate. So I think the ad for me, I tried to approach it as this is an opportunity for people, millions of people who have never heard of Jesus to have their interest peaked yeah. now. But I also understand the argument on the theological side. But what I yeah. liked was that people were having conversations about yes. Jesus online. So if people were able to express their concern about lack of repentance or theology or all of these different and on both sides of the issue, it was. And they wouldn't have been talking about Jesus if <laughs> not for the ad. I understand right. the issue that they felt like it was progressive. It was moving people in the wrong direction. So what did I do? And this is an example. Again, I don't always do this perfectly. I reached out to the guy who created the ad and had him on my podcast. Oh, like, Let's amazing. talk about it. You yeah. know, I want to hear. And did I agree with every single thing that was said? No. Do I think they need stronger follow up? And the, yeah, I thought the website where you're sending people at the end of the ad, it wasn't great. I didn't think it was helpful. There was no call to salvation. Those are legitimate issues. But the ad itself, I think we need to show some grace for it. That was my opinion. Not everybody agreed with me. But I did love that conversations were happening. Well, and that's the important thing. And I love that you had him on your show because I think one of the things that's missing in our culture is dialogue. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, we have come a long way and people are very um, stubborn in what they believe. And a lot of people will shut down instead of saying, explain that to me. Why do you sure. Why do you believe that? Help me understand why you're wrong. No, yeah. <laughs> help me understand. But it's true. That I want to know. Right. And I do think there's a fear because it's like, well, are they trying to convince me otherwise? Are they trying to change my opinion? I have found that by understanding the other side, I actually understand why I believe what I believe. And then I'm able to engage. How can I engage with somebody if I don't understand how they ended up where they are? How did that woman get to the clinic? How did she end up in a place where she felt like she needed to go and have that abortion? It doesn't mean we're excusing the abortion. What it means is we're understanding what led there so we can try to prevent it, stop it, step yeah. in, help turn her back from that, right? And that's the same for any other issue. I feel a lot of us don't, and I've been guilty of this, we just don't understand. Right. Yeah. So that's so good. Well, what are you, any projects that you're working on? What's what's next for you? I, I think we were both in Florida at the same time you were 
filming something. I don't know if you can talk about that, but what's next for you? Yeah, yeah, I'm working on a documentary series with CBN, um, and it's about the supernatural, so that's been really exciting, and just seeing how God works in really incredible ways. Um, on uh, Coming up here, there's a book coming out. Uh, Joshua Broom, who's an ex-porn star, I co-wrote his book with him about okay. his story of coming to faith, and you know, that's kind of where I want to be focused on those stories of just God changing people to point people to God. You know, I don't care about pointing people to myself or my way. That's right. We need to point people to the Lord. That's and right. also what you're doing here, I love, which is exposing the issues that are happening, having these tough conversations. People are really struggling and suffering right now. And the world has sold a lie. The culture has sold a lie to people that they can live for themselves, that they can be a porn. Go do what you want. Live for yourself. Right. That leads to destruction for people and it leads them to a dangerous place. So, you know, my next projects are going to be focused on trying to tell those stories of redemption that point people back to the hope that they can have in Christ. Yeah, that is so great. Well, Billy, thank you so much for being on the show with me today. Thank you. Such a pleasure. We'll put all of your information so people can connect with you. Thank you so much. Love being here. Thanks.